Hi viewers, welcome back to our learning channel. This is now the fifth session under monitoring, evaluation, learning and research and uh, we are discussing in these sessions how to develop logic models. Now in this fifth session, we will develop logical framework or LFA. In previous sessions, we discussed what are logic models. This was the first session of this series. And uh, in that session, we discussed what are logic model, DUC, result framework, and logical framework. If you haven't watched this first session, so the link is given in the description, and you can see it here at the left side above. In the next session, we developed theory of change and result framework. Third and fourth, we developed uh, the theory of change and then result framework. Now, in this session, we will develop logical framework. Because these three were the key documents that we were to develop in the initial stage of the project design. So now in this session, we will develop logical framework and then we will develop proposal based on that logical framework, then work plan, and then the MNE framework and the MNE plan. Before going forward, let me remind you, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video with your friends. Now, in the step one, we developed logic model and the, the first one, the theory of change, and we discussed that the key element is the situation analysis and a proper situation analysis is required. And then we discussed the basic structure and we developed this theory of change. This is the theory of change that we developed for a proposed scenario. This is just a sample. You can improve it a lot, but just here we are discussing the techniques that how to go with these steps. Then we developed a result framework in our uh, third session that is also uploaded in the link as given in the description. So we discuss result framework and this was the result framework that we developed in that session. If you haven't watched that, the link is given in the description and you can see it in the right corner at the top, the link also. Now based on the TUC and the result framework that we developed, we need to develop logical framework and then proposal work plan budget and many framework and many plan now what is this logical framework that we have already discussed in our second session uh, that link is also given in the description but here i would like to share with you that the key important element for the logical framework are basically the tuc the result framework and the Consultation. What is the log frame? The log frame basically defines exactly what indicators, set of actions, or activities, and resources are needed to achieve and measure the results, outcome, and impact. Of. This is basically what the log frame is. Now, this is the structure of the log frame that we discussed in our initial session. Also, at first, you need to identify. Now, uh, you have already developed the result framework and that you see. So, based on that. We will develop indicators and activities and then the other details of indicators and definitions, etc. Some organization use this as a mini framework also, but then you will have to need some more targets that we will discuss in the MNE. Now, based on the result framework, we have below information. You remember that we developed a result framework, which is this one. This one we developed. So here we had the goal, then the video uh, decided about these three outcomes. These are the basic, this is just a basic structure. It's not uh, a complete one. You have to work then with, because these result framework and logical framework are developed in weeks and after detailed consultation, and we developed these in just 20 minutes session. But this is just a sample. So we developed these three outcomes, and then under each outcome, we developed these outputs and then these activities that we will have to interpret in our proposal and the logical framework also. So this was the result. Framework. So here you see, we have this goal, these three outcomes, and these are the outputs. So here, this is the goal based on that result framework. This is the outcome one. Now under outcome one, we have output 1.1 capacity building, and then output 1.2 teaching aids and materials. And then there is outcome two, which is system strengthening. So under that, we have strengthening of schools and policies and system. And then we have outcome three, which is improved school management through PTC. And under this outcome, we have these output 3.1 and 3.2. 
now these three outcomes are contributed to the goal and these outputs are contributing to the relevant outcome now here for logical framework we need indicators so in this session first we will discuss what are indicator what are its types etc and how to develop a logical framework so let's first discuss what are indicators so that we may develop indicator for these different levels and then the definitions and evidence of uh, means of verification and assumption five key words that you need to understand there are indicators there are targets there are definition there are calculation and unit of analysis there are baselines etc an indicator is a tool that should make it possible both to have a sense of the state and also to report an indicator tells us how we are doing for example temperature tells us how cold it is our body temperature whether we are healthy or not that is also a type of indicator now an indicator another example is indicator helps us understand where we stand in relation to a certain objective or a certain purpose but if measured over time also so the direction in which we are moving and how far we are from our destination so basically it's a type of statement which tells you how much you have achieved how much is remaining so the language you are using an indicator should correspond to these three different statements which are explained here so you will see this now in detail when we are de uh, developing indicators for example this is an indicator Uh, and this is taken from the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goal. For example, there for education, the one indicator is proportion of population in a given age group achieving at least a fixed level of proficiency in functional a literacy and numeracy skills by six. This is a type of indicator, which, for example, if your project is based on to uh, improve proficiency which is divided into two sub categories literacy and numeracy skills if your project is based on this so this would be one of your indicator for that project so for indicator you have a target whether that is a number or a direction for example these are also statesmen for example if your target is starting in 2022 and ending in 2025 so you will say by 2025 my project will ensure that all youth in a substantial proportion of adults both men and women achieve literacy and numeracy which is based on this indicator so indicator you can uh, give a statement also or you can just give a number with uh, the required because here timelines are important which would help you when you are evaluating your project if it is opened if the statement is opened ensure that a uh, proportion of uh, a population in a given age is uh, has achieved a fixed level of proficiency fixed level these words you will need to explain in the definitions so if there is no timeline so that is a not smart indicator and what is smart indicator that we will discuss in next slides so this is basically for target you can write the same indicator in a statement like this that by 2030 i will ensure that all youth are if your project is specific to a specific target area so you can say that the relevant youth in substantial proportion of my beneficiaries achieve literacy and numeracy so then your beneficiary target you will have to add here this is a basic example which is taken from the sustainable development goal so an indicator you have to talk about the indicator also and the target also now the characteristics of a good indicator may be outlined as follow its relevance it should be relevant to the project goal outcome if that is a goal level indicator should that should be relevant to the goal if it is outcome so the outcome that you have already developed in the result framework that i showed you in the previous slide and that we developed in the previous session which is which was session 4 so its relevance its ability to summarize information without distortion it should be simple and giving you the correct and summarize information 
its coordinated and structured character, allowing it to be related to other indicators for a global analysis of the system. For example, as I showed you the SDG indicator. So we need to coordinate with other donors indicators and see the relevancy and the structure correct stru structure of characters so that there is synchronization in our data also. It should be precise and you know comparability should be there. It's reliability, the data sources which should be reliable. You have would have heard the smart word, smart indicators. Now what is this smart indicator? Smart is S stand for specific, A measurable, A attainable or relevant and T time. A attainable or achievable, both words can be used. Now let me explain these five characteristics, the S, M, A and R and T. Now for specific, the first criteria specific means that the indicator needs to be narrow and accurately describe what needs to be measured. For example, if you say person current household in the community using toilets, this is specific. But if you say person household using toilets, so this is not specific because person household using toilet where and which type of household, current previous which they, they, this this one is not specific so it should be specific when we will be developing indicators so we will apply these criteria you will understand more these criteria there also it should be measurable now for it, it should be measurable or quantifiable regardless of who uses the indicator it would measure in the same way for example, if different people are measuring this indicator so there must be proper calculation methods and it should be measurable. Percent current household in the community using it, it is measurable. But this one is not proper and it is not specific. You can conduct a survey or an assessment study and you can see that how much of the household in your target area are using toilet. So the statement of the indicator should be in a way which is measurable and it should be achievable also. It should not be that much ambitious which is not achievable. It means that allocating the data would be straightforward and cost effective. The first indicator is likely to be more achievable in these examples. So that should be cost effective and achievable or attainable. Then it should be relevant. It should be uh, closely linked to the relevant outcomes or the uh, goal are the outputs and it should be time bound and we discussed it by 2025 or by this date or by this year tense also and in this sense also for example current household that we used in the so that is now time bound it is not in some way uh, ambiguous for you to calculate as which of the household so in both way it would be useful to specify regularity with which we will measure the indicator annually by annually etc. Et so that should be time bound and uh, related to that and relevant to the outcome and the uh, impact. So these are those criteria which we call smart indicator. Now let's see this example. For example in SDGs there is a goal that eradicate extreme poverty and hunger. This is a goal. So here the outcome for this goal is that half of between 1990 and 2015 the proportion of people whose income is less than a dollar a day. For example if now there are almost 75% or 90% of the people whose uh, income is less than a dollar a day. So uh, you say that between 1990 and 2015, this would come to half, for example, 50%. So this is your outcome. Now the indicator would be proportion of population with the real income below the equivalent of $1 a day, including all sources such as earning. Now it's specifying with these words, you are specifying more and you are making it more measurable and more achievable. And this, these are the calculated method, the calculation method that it would be calculated as total household income divided by household members. So this is your indicator 
which would show you whether you have eradicated the extreme poverty and hunger or not, or whether you have achieved the outcome or not. If you collect the data and see how much of the population with real income is still below the equivalent of this, if that is still 75% or more than 50%, so it means that your outcome has not been achieved. A global example of smart indicator. For definition, it should cover, for example, indicator. For example, there is an indicator net enrollment rate. So definition of keywords. What do you mean by net enrollment rate? What is the objective? Why you are calculating this? To measure part of pupils enrolled in a normal age. This is for this indicator. So this definition should cover the keywords definitions. What is the objective? Rationale why you are doing it because we want education for all. Its level, it should be at national or by district. Its breakdown, for example, disaggregation. You can add another column for disaggregation also, but in the definition, you have to explain this. And the formula, how will you calculate the this indicator? So, this is the formula for this one that number of people enrolled age 6 to 12 years because you are. This is related to net enrollment rate at primary level. So for primary level, the official age is this one. So number of pupils enrolled age this. You will have to calculate the total population at this age and the number of this age children which are who are enrolled in a school. So you can uh, obtain net enrollment rate. If this is your indicator. So in the definition, you will have to explain all these things that you will do in and the real examples also now. Then we have this calculation and unit of analysis that we discussed already in the definition also. And then there is baseline. If you have a baseline data, okay, otherwise that would be zero. Or you will have to conduct a baseline assessment. Or if you can obtain that um, secondary data available on the internet or with donors or with other uh, organization doing work on the similar indicators. Now, let's develop our logical framework based on our scenario that we developed the TUC and the result framework for. So now we are developing a logical framework. Let's see now. We have to add below info from the result framework. This is from the result framework that we developed. This was our goal. These were our three outcomes and these were the outputs. These two for the outcome one, these two for the outcome two and these two for the outcome three. Now Whenever you are developing indicators in the uh, logical framework, so what you need to do, you can uh, go to the relevant SDG goals and indicators also. So you need to understand first the SDGs. These are sustainable development goals, which are for all countries and these are available at the United Nations website. If you can find your indicators there, it's okay. Otherwise, you will have to do consultations and donors who have their own set up uh, indicators. So you can obtain from them that list of indicator or through internet. And you can then um, look up there those list of indicator and see whether you can find your relevant indicators or not. So you have to do all these steps. So you have to see relevant SDG goals and indicator. You have to to see the lists of indicators that are available uh, with the organizations and there are donors who have already uh, a list of indicators, hundreds and thousands of indicators are already available. For education, since our project is based on education, so we will go to the SDG 4. SDG 4 is for education, which is to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. This is a goal. The sustainable development goal which is relevant to SDGs. I will show you the SDG side. So for this goal, their first indicator is proportion of children and young people A in grade 2 or 3, B at the end of primary. A grade 2 or 3 and then at the end of primary and C at the end of lower secondary achieving at least a minimum proficiency level. Now, what is this minimum proficiency level? That is already every country has its own set benchmark. If you are working in the education, so you can find out those on the internet at what are the minimum proficiency level or you can decide about them 
for your project while discussing with your project management and looking at your activities and your cost that how much I can work on this and then you will have to define this these terms and the definition now what is this at least a minimum proficiency level in reading and mathematics and that is by sex that by boys and girls and etc there are other indicators also for this goal like completion rate how much percent of the students are completing primary education lower secondary and upper secondary education now let's see the sdgs indicator and understand uh, what are those indicators so for that you have to go to this website sdgs.un.org this is the website now uh, you, you if you are working in this sector so you can see that in the sdgs there are 17 goals for different type of sectors for example goal one goal one is no poverty this is a goal in poverty in all its form everywhere if your project is related to this so you will have to go to goal this there is goal two zero hunger there is goal three related to health goal four is related to education then there is goal five which is related to gender equality goal six is related to uh, ensure availability and sustainability management of water and sanitation like wash this is goal six now goal seven is related to um, energy decent work this one is related goal eight is related to decent work this is related to industry this is related to um, inequality within and among countries and there are these different indicators goal 11 and then goal 12 and then uh, goal 13 and goal 14 you can see goal 15 goal 16 and goal 17 now our relevant in this scenario is goal 4 which is related to education so we will click now in this goal 4 there are already indicators so you can just go through them and see i have already seen them and there are no such proper indicators for our project but we, we can uh, if your project uh, but that is uh, based on our TUC that we developed now here you see this is goal 4 now here you can see the overview of goal 4 different types of infographics are there but here in this one this this step this is target and indicators so you can come here here you will see targets and indicators now their first target for this goal 4 is that by 2030 this is this SDG is an agenda for 2030 that by 2030 we will ensure that all girls and boys complete free equitable and quality primary and secondary education learning to relevant and effective learning outcomes which you have decided so this is a target now what is the indicator for this so click this one here you can see there are two indicators for this one now this then there is this target here you can see the indicators for this so you can find out the relevant indicators and targets here also if you can find out the relevant one to your project so okay otherwise then you will have to go to the donors list of indicators and the organizational list if that is also not available then the project management you can sit with them and you can decide about this now this site is very important and you should uh, go to this site and you for your relevant uh, sector of uh, where you are working and you can obtain a lot of information and here you can see the progress and info also of different countries in the progress report now let's come to our uh, result framework and we will develop now our indicator for our result framework so to save your time i have already worked on some of this this was that table that i showed you in the start this is that table now here since in the first row i what i did i uh, for the impact and goal i just merged the cells and here i added the goal which we already developed in our result framework in our previous session which is this one so this was our goal so let me copy this and paste it here now here i need some indicators for this goal so here i will add some additional rows and here we can in this level we can say indicator one indicator two and then you you have to decide about your indicator place them here then definition then means and assumptions now uh, and then for the outcomes also i just merged the first cell and here i brought the outcome one so here our outcome one was 
this one what I did I just placed it here this is my outcome one and then under this outcome also you would need this type of indicator so let's bring these rows this would be 1.1 because it's output one and then when it would be output one indicator 1.2 and similarly you can go on then add outcome 2 and then outcome 3 and 4 and then the relevant outputs now let me show you that this was how i developed that table and let me show you now this table so here you can see this is our goal so here we can merge this first cell because this is the overall goal of the project now here for improved quality of education we can decide about our indicators if that is this goal so we can say person increase in enrollment and then the indicator to all learners at the target grade in school i just changed some wording because uh, our project would be specific to a specific target grade in a specific target school with proficiency according to the grade level and having access to safe drinking water at school in basic material for learning now in this indicator what i covered i covered the improved classroom learning environment outcome also because that would be contributing to the goal this goal so i i end the proficiency level so that comes under the improved classroom learning environment because you are going to train the teachers and you are providing them some basic uh, uh, safe drinking water facilities that was in the system strengthening where we discussed about uh, schools where we will be constructing a uh, you seek in the output that we will be constructing some toilets and schools and classrooms etc so we covered this in the goal to uh, all the outcomes and the outputs and this is person increase in enrollment because if there is quality education so you can see the increase in enrollment and you can decide about other indicators so we are just explaining the examples because the, uh, such indicators are developed in weeks with consultation of different project team members etc etc now for example for person increase in enrollment what would be my definition and the calculation method so here first we will say what is increase so here the increase will be calculated on annual basis and will be compared with the enrollment will include now here you can you know give statement whichever you want to avoid any ambiguity at the evaluation stage so this is very important to properly explain your indicator that by this increase i simply mean that on annual basis i will be doing the calculation that for example in grade 3 in the previous year there were this much number of students learning and now this is the increase so that would be the simple method you can uh, explain some other advanced method also if you are doing some more activities which can do because the enrollment increase can be due to different reasons not just because of your project so you can explain all those things here in the definition and in the calculation uh, since my you can also explain that since my project is specific to a specific area there are funding issues so my uh, calculation will be based on these reasons i mean that you have to explain all those things for example if you are explaining this one this one all learners at the target grade in school so here you can explain uh, what you mean by learner or you can say the students are reading at a specific grade in the target school now what is this uh, grade proficiency by proficiency we mean that the students will be able to read and do basic level of calculation according to the national student standards or the provincial standards or you can define those words according to your project for example if your project is doing work on english proficiency uh, to uh, for example if your project is aiming that by grade 3 each student should be able to read a b c and then uh, write uh, basic sentences of english so all that you have aimed with your project you have to explain in this definition that what you mean by proficiency what you mean by the grade level by grade level for example if you are working uh, only in the primary school from nursery to uh, fifth grade so you can say by grade level we mean that from nursery to grade fifth if you are targeting a specific proficiency level for a specific grade so you will have to explain that specific grade the proficiency level also 
all learners how will you calculate this i will calculate that all the schools where these facilities are available and by learners how will you calculate the learner that you can do that i will do a random sampling of 10 to 15 students assessment and that will show me that whether the students are able to reach this proficiency level or not so you have to explain all those things in this definition then for the evidence what would be the evidence and means of verification for this so person increase in enrollment so that you can say that uh, means of verification would be the school registers admissions record enrollment forms etc etc so whatever a uh, means of verification you decide but by means of verification it means like this that it will be verified how if someone see that there is this indicator and if a third party or if um evalu any evaluator is evaluating the data of this indicator so what would be the means of verification that would be these tools these different registers these records databases your own databases, schools databases, the D, uh, if there are some uh, government related databases records, so you can add them also. What might be the assumptions? So here you can add assumptions that there might be some enrollment due to other reasons also. Uh, and uh, under the assumptions uh, and risks, you can add interest of the schools, heads and the teachers, uh, the community support, the support from the government department so you can add all those assumptions here so that if later on someone calculate the data and if there are issues so they can also see the assumptions that these were our assumptions and you can also while implementing the project see these assumptions whether we are facing those things or not which we assumed so if there are so how you are going to address them so then there are some risk mitigation strategies etc that also you have to add so here you can add assumption and risk also are only assumptions so all those details you will have to add here and in this way you will be able to develop your logical framework and here i want to show you for the improved classroom learning environment we decided about for example percentage of student experiencing bullying corporal punishment harassment violence sexual discrimination and abuse so if this person is decreasing so your classroom enrollment uh, classroom environment is improving if this is decreasing so you can add such type of indicator you can add percentage of children uh, taught by trained and qualified teacher because there is your output one output is related to capacity building this is output one so you are doing some capacity building and this is for the improved classroom learning environment so you are doing under this some capacity building of teachers and teaching learning materials so you can add this type of indicator also that how much uh, percentage of children are taught by trained and qualified teachers or you can add other types of uh, percent of schools where uh, your project trained teachers are teaching to the students so that would be also giving you some data regarding whether the classroom learning environment is improving or not. Then there is system strengthening. So for system strengthening, policies and systems are in place for quality education. This can be indicated. What you mean in the definition, you will have to define. What do you mean by policies? Policies related to you that you have uh, identified in your project that we will be working on these, these policies. For example, policies related to uh, admissions, policies related to uh, curriculum, policies related to of school management etc etc so all those policies you can add here in the uh, definition and what would be the means of verification for those policies so you can add here uh, for the means of verification you can add that uh, by means of verification we mean that there would be uh, this uh, notification of those policies and the implementation in the schools etc assumptions uh, the government uh, approvals and government's endorsement and government uh, agreement etc all those you can add here and you can also add system strengthening so you can add under the policies curriculum and assessment is appropriate to learner age and level of schooling and responsive to the learning uh, needs if your project is working on the curriculum system strengthening is based on the curriculum also and in the assessment also if you are working on this so you can add this type of indicator also which will calculate 
that whether the curriculum and assessment is appropriate to learner. So, by what do you mean by appropriate? You would have to explain it here. By appropriate, you can mean that um, that is validated by the uh, curriculum uh, directorate also, and that is uh, okay according to the educational experts also. So, you can do such type of assessments then of the curriculum and come up with the data that whether the curriculum and assessment is appropriate or not. You can add percent of target school where students have access to safe drinking water at school. You can uh, add this type of indicator also because in the system strengthening, you will be doing this type of activities. If you are not doing it, so you can remove it. For the improved school management through PTC and monitoring, you can add percent of target school with functional PTCs. So here you will have to define functional. What do you mean by functional? You can say that by functional, I mean that they are meeting on monthly basis, they are developing action plans, they are implementing those action plans, there are some work done by the PTCs through their own funding sources. So all these functional PTCs, you can explain them in the definition. What are the monitorings? Uh, and then you can add monitoring system in place for school management. This is also an indicator. And what is that monitoring system that you can explain in the definition? What would be the means of verification that that monitoring system is properly being implemented? And these are the evidences that uh, SDOs, SDOs are visiting schools and filling up the monitoring tools and giving you the information and reporting those. So these are the outcome level indicators. Then for the output, those are simple type of indicator. For example, if, do, if you are doing capacity building of teachers, so you can add simple number process level indicator, the number of teachers trained, number of training conducted, number of um, uh, teachers capacity enhanced, uh, number of teachers pre-test, post-test results, you can add all a number of schools provided with teaching learning material here you can add number of school where classroom were constructed number of school where toilets were constructed for policies number of policies and systems developed for capacity building of ptcs number of schools we are number of ptc members trained on school management uh, developing action plans etc number of teacher trained and and for management and monitoring you can add here that a uh, 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 number of uh, 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 MNE systems uh, developed and number of MNE system being implemented, number of ASDOs and SDOs trained on load management and monitoring systems, etc., etc. You can add output level indicator, which are simple in numbers, but the outcome and output level are sometimes in the proportion and the percentages and this type of indicators. So they are also you can come up with number up and uh, with numbers indicator. Now it's not important that it should be a percent, but if that is contributing to the goal, otherwise that is not applicable here. And the output also you can come up with percent. That for example here capacity building of teacher is a percent of teachers capacity enhanced, but then you will have to conduct assessment of the teacher and according to your training that you provided and you will have to assess whether the capacity has been enhanced or not and then you will have to define that by enhanced capacity what do you mean by enhanced capacity by enhanced capacity i mean that they would be able to do this 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 this, this level of thing so that you can add then in this in these details and similarly person of teacher capacity enhanced person of teachers with improved post test score you can add this type of indicator for teaching learning material as i explained simple number of school provided with teaching learning material here also you can add percent of classroom uh, percent of uh, print rich classroom or percent of school where the classrooms are print rich so you can add these type of different percent also and number also indicators for all these but the basic structure is this and the purpose was to explain to you the indicators development and definition that evidence and then the inception. So this would be your logical framework. Then after this, uh, at this stage, they will be developing proposals also. So you can obtain from the proposals what are the activities which will be contributing to these indicators and what are the inputs. So you can add them here also or you can develop this result framework in an Excel sheet where you can add level then indicator and here also you can add a column where you can explain your activities that which activities would be contributing to this indicator and that we will discuss in the MNE framework because that is relevant to that level because when MNE frameworks are developed so all the LFA is the proposal and work plans are already developed so you have a lot of information to explain that 
into your MNE framework. So this was the basic structure of the logical framework. Now in the next session, this is becoming a lengthy video, but in the next session, we will discuss how to develop their proposal work plan, MNE framework and MNE plan. Hope you enjoyed the session. If you have any comments, so do comment on the video. I will respond. If you have any question at the end of the video, my email is given so you can communicate through that email also and we will be in touch. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe and share with your friends. Dear viewers, we have started this YouTube channel. We are a free of cost learning tutorial on if you want to learn Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Access, PowerPoint, MS Word, other learning tips. So we have detailed playlists and there are hundreds of tutorials on Microsoft Excel, uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, how to design presentation, Microsoft Access, how to develop databases and manage data, online data collection, learning Google Form, Kobo, MS Forms. If you visit this channel, you can find lots of video tutorials. Kindly support us, visit the channel. For example, in MS Excel, you will find these sessions in a proper sequence. For example, in MS Excel playlist, we have this basic session and then session two, three, four. So if you start learning these sessions, so from the start, you can go ahead and you will find in a sequence sessions on Microsoft basics, data analysis, conditional format, pivot tables, use of if, uh, concatenate formulas, dependent drop down, list validation, name managers, VLOOKUP, XLOOKUP function, F function, uh, advanced use of count, F in some ifs, how to find duplicates, tricks and tips related to Microsoft Excel, how to develop search boxes, searchable drop down list, aggregate functions, tracking performance of the projects or any other uh, analysis of research that you have conducted, for example, school groups and other such studies. There are sessions on uh, how to develop beautiful charts, attractive charts, speedometers, uh, dashboards in Microsoft Excel. Similarly, in PowerPoint, also you will find how to design beautiful presentation in PowerPoint, how to do in MS Access. Also, you will find all these sessions in proper sequence. Uh, the Access Tutorials playlist here are almost eight sessions. Uh, in session one, you will find the basics how to create tables, queries, forms, and then you will go on with advanced options in Microsoft Access. Similarly, you will find tutorial on how to uh, collect online data, Google Form, uh, Kobo, uh, MS Form. Uh, you will find also the use of MS Word, the mail merge functions. There are session on SPSS also, so you can learn SPSS if you need to do some analysis in SPSS. There is a series on project management also, how to conduct need assessment studies. Kindly support us, visit the channel, watch, learn and improve your productivity. Thank you so much.